What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video with me, Whitey Exotics. Now, I was browsing the Arachno boards. Recently someone posted a question about identifying his karate species. So the second comment here is quite right. It is pretty much impossible to identify most of them, but guys, there is a way you can do a quick visual guide. So that's what the purpose of this video is about. I responded here and we're gonna go through each of them and just talk about these visual traits. So just before I get started guys, I'm going to give a shout out to these pages which I got some of the photos from. So this is GiantSpiders.com, they have some photos of Gigas and Histocrates Apolosticus, which I'll go through in a minute. Same with this one, Tarantulopedia, this is for Elephantiasis, I don't know if I pronounced that right. So these photos are taken by Richard Gallant. Alright, let's get started on this list, here we go. So. Starting off guys, we're going to go with Histocrates Gigas. Now this is generally what you're going to find in the hobby, they're pretty much the pet trade Gigas. And this one is a juvenile here, so basically up to about 4 to 6 inches, a Gigas will get enlarged leg 4. Uh, the patella and the tibia, even the femurs will be thickened. And what actually happens is when this spider gets to about six and a half to seven inches, it, it actually molts out of this and the legs become more normal size relative to the rest of the spider. They're still quite thickened, but this is what an adult gigas will end up looking like. You can see this in my previous videos with my gigas. And as you can see, the legs have now sort of, you know, morphed into a normal size over these successful molts. And the carapace actually ends up being quite large. So this is where I think Rick C. West had on his website, he had a massive Hercules pictured, which was uh, more than likely just a Gigas. But he did say that it would be a junior synonym of the Gigas genus, so he's not absolutely saying this is a Hercules. Now this is a very impressive spider, they can get to about 20 centimeters in leg span. I had a female that was just maybe a little bit over that, 21 centimeters. Moving on, so now we've got Histocrates crassipes, which is very similar to a Gigas. It's actually almost indistinguishable but the thing is these do not get quite as large so where gigas will get to 20 centimeters these will get to about 17 the carapace seems to be more narrow and you'll notice that the uh, leg 4 the modification seen in the gigas is present here to an extreme level the the crassipes leg 4 is just just a tank uh, it never actually molts out of this so they will, will just stay looking like this right until adulthood when they're about this sort of size you can see the leg 4 is still predominantly the strongest set of legs. So moving on to the next spider now guys, the Histocrates species Nigeria or Latticeps as we found out they pretty much are defined as and here's a juvenile. Now with the Latticeps their legs are all pretty much normal size bar leg 4 which seems to be slightly undersized, it's very thin looking. I actually do find that leg 1 is you know quite thickened but it's just still regarded as normal size. So this one's a juvenile. You can also see the colours very tanned. And that's something I forgot to mention about the Crassipes. It's called the mouse brown baboon spider because its colour is lighter than a Gigas. A Gigas is generally darker. Uh, I would say these are even lighter in colour for the most part, but you can get darkened ones, which is why it's not good to go from colour alone. So this is what they look like when they get to an adult. This is my photo here of, of what my Histocrates species Nigeria, Latticeps, ended up looking like. Massive rounded carapace, that's one of their identifying traits. The leg four remains very thin throughout their life, and uh, all the other legs are pretty much normal sized. You end up with a spider that gets to about the same sort of size as a Gigas, slightly bulkier looking, uh, but pretty much you know similar sort of size. So they are impressive. Now, also from Nigeria is the Histocrates Hercules, which is the one that there has been so much confusion about and a lot of people saying they have them, put them in the hobby. There is only one holotype which exists in the British National History Museum and here's the picture of the spider in the jar. As you can see, just like the latter, it's a very large carapace. Uh, all the other legs relative are smaller and more stubby legged as Rich Gallen you know, has been quoted as saying. Now if we go to these photos posted by Andrew Smith, you've got a Histocrates Hercules, this is the official holotype put next to a male blondie. He told me it was around 10 inches in size and the largest one in the museum. So you can see that the Hercules is a big spider. Leg span wise it's pretty much the same as the Gigas and Latticeps, roughly around the 8 inch mark. But what I did notice, and I pointed this out to Andrew, is that leg 4 does look very thick. 
Um, I think it was, I don't know if it was Pocock that mentioned the, the leg four was unmodified. Um, what we can see here is it has a pear shape and is quite thickened, but apparently all legs are similar size in relation to one another in, in terms of thickness. So the spider also looks very orange. I'm not sure, obviously, as it's been preserved for a hundred years, I'm not sure if there's any changes that have taken place in it, because originally it was supposed to have shone with a greyish silky sheen when collected, and that's a newly molted spider generally. So going over to the next picture, we've got a top-down shot of the Hercules next to the male blondie. As you can see, it doesn't quite compete, but it's pretty close in terms of body size. Now a female blondie would be you know, quite a bit bigger than this with, with bigger chelicerae, so it's not a rival for that, but you can still see this is a very impressive spider. What I also noticed was the abdomen, in relation to other histocrites, is quite tubular looking. It actually goes back quite a way, and we can see this by looking at... Uh, let's just do... Crassipes, you can see it's quite rounded, and the same with uh, a gigas. That's obviously a very overfed specimen, but you can see. All right, okay, maybe that looks a bit tubular, so possibly it was underfed, but it was just an observation I had uh, with this spider. Now, moving on to the next species, guys, we've got Histocrates apolysticus, which is from the Sao Tome principle of Africa, so it's, it's a small remote island. And the identifying trait with this species, it has a narrower carapace, is obviously smaller size than the uh, first few species listed, but can still get to roughly around the seven and a half inch mark. Now with this species, you're looking at the leg four once again, because it seems with Histocrates, they've always got something modified. So we have a club footed appearance, I want to say, and that is a thickening of the tarsus and metatarsus and you can see it just, it sort of, you know, it goes out to a club-footed type appearance, very similar to a Pelanobius muticus, the king baboon spider. So that's the identifying trait with this. It's also quite a, a different colour, but again, colour is a hard one to go off of. Now we do have some other pictures of this species, so if we go back over to these websites, um, we'll get to that one in, in a minute. Uh, this was the one I believe. And they also have a YouTube page, you can check that out, called Finding the South Home Giant, uh, Finding the South Home Baboon. This is not Septicus, guys. Septicus is another species that is on this island that is even bigger, and is mostly related to Hercules in terms of proportions. So, looking at this spider, once again you'll see the thickened club-footed appearance is present on leg four. It did occur to me that maybe that could even be a Septicus here, but because it just says uh, species Saltome. But yeah, this this may even be a Septicus. But I think uh, these legs look very much thickened and modified, so I would say this is probably a Polysticus. And you're looking at you know what an adult a Polysticus gets to, which is you know, a very reasonably chunky spider, to be honest with you guys. And there we go, we can definitely see it present here, the, the thickened tarsus metatarsus. So that's the identifying trait with that. You'll also notice the colour is greyish, so colour is not a good one to go by. Right. So next up we've got Histocrates septicus, which is most allied to Histocrates hercules, as Andrew Smith says. In terms of proportions, this spider is obviously going to hit above the 8 inch mark. The carapace is roughly 34 millimeters to Hercules is 36, so it's pretty close, not quite as wide, uh, but it does have just a giant carapace. Um, in terms of legs, they're all pretty much the same size, so it's very closely related. And this spider also comes from Sao Tome. It's called the Sao Tome Giant Baboon Spider, or Olive Brown Baboon. And I found a website originally on this that uh, must have been years old, that basically talked about how they were imported by Glades Herps in the 90s, and they can get to, you know, nine inches in leg span. So I can't find any pictures of that, but pretty much what we've got here is something that resembles a gigas, maybe slightly larger. It would be interesting to see more of these, but they're not actually in the hobby. Again, just like the Hercules, so not much more else can be said, but yeah, very impressive spider. Now finally, guys, the last Histocrates I'm going to mention on this list, and there are other ones, there's the Histocrates Maximus, uh, 
Ederai and some other ones, which I don't have identifications for, so I'm not going to list that. We've got Histocrates elephantiasis. Uh, I think I said that right. And uh, this one was recently re revised by Richard Gannon. He moved it from the genus Phoniusa to Histocrates. And as you can see, where most Histocrates have thickened back legs, this one has modified front legs instead, giving it this ridiculous spider gorilla type appearance. This one's a female, and as you can see, it looks like, I'm going to say, a medium-sized tarantula. Everything else is pretty much regular size, bar these front legs. And here is the male. So looking at, um, you know, Gigas and other males, doesn't look much different, but you can, it doesn't look much different, but you can see the uh, front legs are modified, even in the males. Just not to the same extent as the female. So yeah, very impressive spider, and to my knowledge, also not in the hobby, guys. Well, I think that's about it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. It's a bit wordy, um, but those are some brief identifying features you can use. There's no way to guarantee 100%, because in photos, uh, lighting, angle, everything can vary the look of the spider. So bar those few traits and knowing what to look for, you're going to still struggle. But I hope you guys have enjoyed. Please like, comment and subscribe, share the video, whatever else. Catch you next time guys, thank you.